Some of you may have heard that I'm a PCB rock star. I mentioned it in another Chalk Talk, even. Give me a good board design tool and I'm up on stage, throwing down some truly inspired placements, creating some awesome tracks. The crowd goes wild. <sighs> Just like with rock and roll, superior board design takes years of practice and quite a bit of talent. You know, like I've got. <laughs> know what can bring a rock star like me down? A crummy guitar. If you want to do the best placement and routing, you need a PCB tool that will let you express yourself. You want an axe that gives you just the right combination of control so you can get exactly the results you want and automation so you don't spend way too much time getting those results. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Rockstar ambitions aside, it is important to have a PCB layout tool that works smoothly with you to achieve the results you need. My guest today is Jim Martins of Mentor Graphics, and I'm going to chat with Jim about placement and routing with Mentor's PADS system. It might just be the Stratocaster of board layout tools. Before we get started, I want to remind everyone that you can click on that Download Now button below your player. There you can download a free white paper that further expands on this topic. Welcome, Jim. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for hosting me. So, Jim, a lot of us doing board design are really proud of our routing. We've been doing this for years, and we've got mad skills. At least I do. <laughs> but we're going to start off talking about placement. Why do we need to pay attention to placement? Can't we just jump into the fun part? Well, one of the most critical steps early in the design is PCB placement. A good placement leads to success further downstream with regards to layout. You know, first, how routable is the design? A good placement leads to good routability. Right. That could mean less layers, less vias, shorter traces, and shorter time spent during routing. More layers and vias mean higher production costs, so the end product material costs go up as well, and thus the routability of the two devices. Will you have enough room for all the fan outs, for example? True, yeah. Secondly, better signal integrity, thus better performance. As I mentioned, good placement will lead to shorter traces and more vias. If your design requires length constrained nets, placement plays a big part. Well, what happens if a net between two components has a requirement to be less than two inches and the components are placed on opposite sides of the board, say five inches apart? Yeah. That constraint will never be met. With regard to vias, with today's high data rates such as DDR, SATA, CERDES, and other technologies, the parasitic effects of vias can seriously affect the signal integrity of a trace. Eliminating or at least minimizing vias of these traces is critical. Mm -hmm. Placement has a direct impact on manufacturability. Sure. Are you placing components too close to one another that automatic insertion is okay? I've seen some big BGAs be placed at 45 degree angles. Wow, okay. Can that component be automatically placed by your manufacturer? If not, it will need to be manually inserted, and that takes time delaying the manufacturing run and costing more money. Sure. The way flow solder process is affected by placement. For example, the height of a component next to a smaller component can have a shadowing effect, ah. and the reliability of that component's assembly to the board can be compromised. And of course, all this affects quality and cost. Sure, that makes sense. And so today we're using Mentor Graphics pads. Probably everybody has heard about it before, but I've always wanted to know, Jim, what does PADS stand for? That's a good question. PADS is an acronym, Personal Automated Design System. Okay. And even though it's been around a while, we've always targeted you, the individual engineers or small teams at companies doing PCB design. Okay, so you've told us that placement is really important. Okay, I got that. But how do we go about getting a good placement with pads? Pads, like all CAD tools, has the basics. Place, move, rotate, flip. But in pads, one of the many usability features we give you is access these commands the way you like to work. Cool, okay. Either from the menu, a pop-up menu, or by a hotkey. All right. You can work in a modal mode where you can keep placing or moving without having to reselect the command from a menu. Cool, okay. Then you can operate the function on an individual component or selected several and move, rotate, or flip them all at once. All right. Amelia, I know you want to and need to place your components intelligently. Of course. Grouping components that are connected to one another near each other. Yeah. Typically, the schematic is drawn this way. So a good way to place today is directly from the schematic. Pads allows you to open both the schematic and layout simultaneously. And as you select the component on the schematic, you can set it so that the component is automatically attached to the cursor when you move it into the layout window. 
speeding placement, and giving the design great direction on what components need to be placed together. Very cool, okay. A great command within pads is move sequential. A perfect use case for this is on the schematic sheet when you have a group of components you want to place together and select them all in the schematic. When it moves sequential mode, when you move the cursor to the layout window, the first component is attached. When you place it, the next one in the selected group automatically attaches to the cursor. Place that, then the next attaches until they are all placed. This can really speed up placement. Yeah, absolutely. I can see that. Pads has a feature called unions, which allows you to associate multiple components together once they are placed. Okay. For example, you have a large BGA with several bypass caps associated with it. Placing bypass caps correctly can take some thought and time. But what happens if you need to move that BGA? Yeah. You can select them all, assign them as a union in one command, and when you move one, they all move together, saving you lots of time. I can see that. Okay. A huge time saver is physical design reuse, PDR. There are a couple of ways this can be used. One use model is creating a golden circuit. Okay. Maybe you're designing the first board of a new series of part numbers your company is coming out with. For this series of boards, you may be able to use a section of circuitry, maybe the power supply. You can place it, even route it, and save it off to the library. Ah, okay. Then when you design the next board, just pull it from the library and place it in the new design, already placed and routed. Easy. But a more common use model is in multi-channel designs. Place the first channel and route it. Create a reuse element, and you can replicate it in seconds, as many times as you need to, whether it's two channels, eight, 16. I've had customers who've done 128 channel designs that have told me what used to take them two days now takes them two hours. Nice. That's awesome. And this isn't just a copy and paste. It's an intelligent algorithm that selects the correct component for each replicated reuse so you can be ensured the right part is being used. Okay, Jim, I've got my awesome placement. Let's talk about the fun part. What about routing? Interactive routing is an essential part of the design process. And modern dense designs can be very challenging and time-consuming. True. So it's critical to have intelligent interactive routing that is effective, can guide the designer, respect all the constraints, and create neat trace geometry from the beginning. Right. There's no one best way to route design. There are many variables and many individual preferences, all of which have to be taken into account. Let's look closely at different challenges that have to be addressed by interactive routing. All right, Jim, that one route, uh, that kind of looks like my drive to work this morning. There's uh, my Starbucks stop and my stop for gas. <laughs> First of all, interactive routing has to be convenient. Sure. Thus, it has to be flexible, easy to learn, easy to use, and customizable. So you can focus on the routing plan and reveal your creativity during the process. Right, because if routing is an art, Jim, right, this environment kind of needs to be like a canvas in your brush. You need to feel comfortable. Absolutely. In Densport, all routing channels can quickly get blocked, leaving no space for additional routing. Interactive routing should be capable enough to resolve clearance conflicts when sneaking traces and vias between already routed ones. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it may require multiple cycles of rerouting in order to find the critical space and or it might take more routing layers than would be needed naturally. Okay. Good interactive routing should have a breadth and depth of various features, such as customizable routing angle, full control of the created geometry and its automatic generation following cursor moves, layer, and via type change, choosing of the appropriate conflict resolution mode, following particular borders, etc. Comprehensive arsenal of these capabilities will greatly help you with effective routing. Okay. Online design rule checking should adhere to all constraints, thus ensuring that no rule is violated you don't have to fix issues afterwards. Yeah. Equally important is to have nice and well-created trace geometry so that after interactive routing, the design will immediately be ready for manufacturing without any need for final tweaking. Yeah. A special emphasis should be made on high-speed nets, differential pairs, and match length groups. It's very critical to route them right. The interactive router should handle such nets and allow you to easily meet all the required high-speed constraints. Okay, so we've talked about routing environments in the abstract, but Jim, tell me about the interactive routing in pads. Let's get down to some details here. Okay, pads interactive route capabilities allow you to quickly route connections together in multiple ways. Okay. Simple point and click segment by segment, or dynamically allow the interactive router to find the best path, bending around pads, pushing and shoving if you allow, Okay. and always adhering to the design rules you have set up. The PADS interactive router is so intuitive and easy to use that new users can quickly pick it up and have a very short learning curve. Excellent. All powerful capabilities are immediately accessible via pop-up menus or using convenient shortcuts. Nice, okay. The powerful PADS push and shove engine quickly and surely resolves conflicts, allowing you to find the perfect path among existing routing. All right, I need me a push and shove engine. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> At any moment, the geometry of traces is kept neat and high-quality pad entries generated. Controlling trace entries and exits from component pads and ensuring the right trace direction with no acid traps 
significantly improves manufacturability. Additional geometry updates after the routing is done will not be needed. Nice. Everything is in excellent condition without any clearance violation. Fantastic. Interactive guard bands show obstacles and demonstrate the real clearances to the trace being routed. That provides a very convenient guidance when routing in tight areas. This allows you to see exactly how much room the traces plus the clearance you have to get the trace in. Okay. In some cases, it's required to adhere to the shape obstacle or to follow the board outline. Mm -hmm. Pads follow route allows routing a trace near an obstacle, a border, a copper, a keep out, or another trace, and follows its geometry. Nice, okay. This command helps maximize trace density and better utilize board space. Okay, Jim, what about high-speed nets? Pads provides everything needed for routing high-speed nets. Great. The length of the net can be dynamically checked using the length monitor or look at the data in the spreadsheet where the actual trace length is updated in real time as the length is added. During interactive routing, it is possible to automatically add an accordion rather than digitize each corner separately, thus getting the required length quickly and checking if there is enough length already by looking at the length monitor. Ah, okay. When starting to route a net that belongs to a differential pair, it automatically starts routing both nets bring the two traces at the required gap distance. As with regular nets, all powerful features such as push and shove, guard bands, etc. are available. PADS Interactive Route has everything you need to design your PCB. This powerful functionality is a real productivity booster, allowing you to save design time, have clean results, and from the beginning, have a design ready for manufacturing with high quality. That sounds great. All right, Jim, are you prepared? I'm going to bring up a subject that's kind of controversial, and some of us who take a lot of pride in our routing skills don't want to talk about it. What about auto routing? I know, I know. Yeah, I know. Talk about auto routing is sometimes taboo. It's true. But our PADS auto router simplifies routing operations that are best suited for an auto router. Okay. That is, it was developed to tackle designs with lots of signal integrity and high-speed constraints. But equally important, it also performs verification checks that ensures that both electrical routing requirements and manufacturing goals are met. It is important to point out that when a design is being auto routed, there are actually several auto routing operations that are being performed serially. Okay. The designer can select the operations and in the order in which they are performed. So the planning and executing of a good auto routing strategy ensures results are optimal, meets all your design goals, and meets all the design rules, and provides good completion rates with no violations. Fantastic. Also, the auto router should not be considered a push button and route the entire board type of tool. Okay. Customers who are most successful with auto routing will route some critical nets interactively, perhaps even selectively route traces by certain nets or classes, or even on smaller portions of designs in order to get quicker and more predictable results. Ah, okay. The user is also given the ability to pause the auto router, adjust or change the rules if desired, and then continue auto routing with the updated rules. Oh, okay. The testimonials on this slide represent just a few of the reasons why PADS router continues to be the leading PCB auto router in our market space. Our PADS router combines ease of use with great value and broad technology, which makes it ideal, particularly for complex PCB designs. Very nice. Okay, so it sounds like some people really like it. Maybe I'll give it a try, Jim. Let's dive in a little more. Tell me how it works. Sure. Not only is the PADS auto router easy to set up and easy to use, it provides sophisticated auto routing intelligence for high-speed applications. So whether your design requires routing with orthogonal, diagonal, or any angle styles, maybe differential pair routing with unique rule assignments, tuning nets automatically to meet min and max match length constraints, or an option for a gridded or gridless mode, the PADS router provides the user with exacting control. Cool, okay. The auto router obeys all design rules for pad entry and fan outs to ensure the engineer's signal integrity, power integrity, and manufacturer requirements for the design are accomplished. And the auto router's intuitive graphical monitoring tools provide real-time feedback for correct by construction methodologies. And the auto router's intuitive graphical monitoring tools provide real-time feedback for a correct by construction methodology. The PADS auto router's proven routing algorithms also enable robust design rules and advanced design constraints to be applied between objects or groups or objects such as components, layers, nets, and vias. Ah, okay. An important part of the auto routing planning conversation has to include DFT, design for test, and DFM, design for manufacturing, verification, and should be part of the designer's strategy when auto routing. Sure. Pre-route analysis ensures use of the optimum rule strategy, while post-route analysis maximizes manufacturing yields. For example, our design for test routine can perform automatic test point insertions as part of a normal routing pass. 
for optimal test point placement. Oh, okay. Auto routing with DFT rules can be set for component pads and via placement under SMD pads and checked using state of the art post route audits and design verification. PADS helps you play an early role in validating the routing of a design by considering key aspects of fabrication and assembly that directly impact the design's manufacturability. Again, preparing an optimal design strategy can be accomplished quickly and easily with the PADS auto router, and executing on design intent and first pass success is our goal. Once the route is complete, both online and batch DRC confirms that all rules are met and the design is error free. Great. The PADS user interface is designed for ease of use and efficiency. It meets the needs of the power user while keeping the beginner in mind. The PADS auto router shortened design cycle can eliminate respins, which result in quicker time to market and a happier boss. Which everyone loves. <laughs> okay, Jim, this has been quite a bit to wrap my head around today. Can you sum up the main points real quick? Sure. So the takeaways from today's presentation. Good placement is essential to the success of your design. Good placement leads to better routability, signal integrity, quality, and lower costs. Okay. Powerful interactive routing features are required for today's tough designs. Whether the issue is density, fine pitch components, or highly constrained designs with differential pairs and length constraints, you need tools to seamlessly adhere to these constraints while pushing and shoving traces to complete all connections. Give automatic routing a chance. By implementing selective auto routing, you can control exactly what and how the router works, and you get the design that meets your electrical design rules and is manufacturable as well. Okay. <laughs> Pads to deliver this and much more. If you want to try it out yourself, Go to this link for our virtual labs or download the full ES suite to try it on your own PC. Okay, you've sold me. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Jim. It was a pleasure speaking with you. And a pleasure for me as well. And before we go, don't forget to click that Download Now button below the player to download a free white paper that further expands on this topic. For Chalk Talk, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the on-demand section of eejournal.com.